I could go up right now and knock on the door of the White House and they probably wouldn't let me in. But if I was, if I had a position on the, on, on, in the White House, I'd walk up and knock on the door and never expect to not be turned, to, to be turned down. Right? Because that was where I, my position is. I could, if I worked for the CIA, I could walk right into the CIA headquarters. Y'all with me if my status is that? But without that piece of paper, without that, that authority, I can't go in there. When you understand who you are in Jesus, it gives you the rights to walk into the King of Kings, to the throne of heaven, to the benefits that are in heaven because you have already been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. You already have the rights and privileges to go there. But if you don't, you don't get nothing. Can you imagine this? I'm just going to try to just shake your brain a little bit. Imagine that the Bible says that angels long to be sons of God. And that they look into the privileges that you have and are amazed. The Bible also says that the saints at the end are going to judge the world. And they'll judge the angels. So can you imagine you're standing there and you get the angel that killed 185,000 Assyrians in one night. And you're supposed to judge him? What are you going to say? Uh, well done. <laughs> Did a good job there, boy. I mean, you're going to argue with him? Well, I think he could have got 186,000. I'm just telling you the position. You don't have any earthly idea. We, our brains, our little brains, can, because we look at this world and we look at this economy and we look at our, our, our positions and our statuses in life and wh- what income you're making and comparing ourselves with the other, somebody that's wealthy and we try to compare ourselves on this earth when you skip what you've already got in heaven. And if we would learn to walk as sons of God on the face of this earth, I'm not talking about a haughty. I'm not talking about because the principles of God don't work like the principles of God work in love. Mercy and grace. I'm not talking about going out and exercising and saying, hey, you know who I am. You can't puff your chest up on this earth. You can't in heaven, but you can on earth. Can you imagine Moses walking up to you and saying, man, what was it like to go to church in those days? To worship God and to feel the presence like that with everybody. Imagine Moses coming up and asking a question. Like that. He never has experienced this. Moses never got to experience what it was like to walk on this earth with Jesus in his life. Moses never got to walk knowing what it was like to have his sins forgiven. Oh, they made blood sacrifices and they tried to make the atonement, but you always had to worry that if you did anything wrong, you were going to be in error. So he knew he was, he was going to be in error. He never got to experience that. Can you imagine Noah walking up to you, Chad, and saying, man, what was it like? He built an ark and he did something amazing, but he never had the Spirit of God into him. See, church, you've got to understand the in Christ realities of what Jesus has bought and given you today. What's your privileges? What is, you've got to get into the Word of God. You've got to dig into this thing and you've got to grab a hold of it. I'm just giving you some ice, little tips of the icebergs this morning. Verse 4 says, Just as He chose us in Him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. Holy and without blame before Him? Do you understand what the blood of Jesus has done for you? Why do we live in shame and guilt when repentance is there for us to wash all of our sins away? Why do we live, let the devil use and plague our past and come into our lives and say, listen, you're never going to be much for God because you did this or you did that. Why do we let the devil do that to us and put those thoughts in our head? Why do we let the prophets of the devil speak to us when the truth is, if you would repent... And turn to Jesus, he says you'd wash all your sins away and that you would be holy and without blame before him in love. Without blame means without blame. You can go look it up. Without blame means they can't find nothing on you. There ain't no dirt on you. They can't pull up this piece of paper and say, 
Somebody can't come up and say, uh, look at this, what he did over here. Ain't no blame. Ain't nothing out there. It's erased. Whew. Y'all don't seem too excited about that. <laughs> Verse 5 says, in Ephesians 1, 5 says, Having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasures of his will. Now, I, I mean, y- y- uh, my son sits over there. My daughter, she's back there. And I'll tell you this much. My son can be wrong, but he's my son. And you better not mess with my son. You better not mess with my daughter. She can be wrong, but she's my daughter. Blood's thick. How do you think God feels about you? How do you think God feels about you? You think that God's going to say, well, let's fry them a little bit and see, throw some cancer on them, see if they won't turn. That is the dumbest theology I've ever heard in my life. When the Bible time after time after time says, he's your son, he loves you, wants you to come home to him. Story of the prodigal son, he's gone out and he's done everything wrong, but he comes home and the father runs out, kisses him and says, put all the good stuff on him. God wants to wrap you in a robe. God wants to put a ring on your finger. God wants to put new shoes on your feet. He don't want, he don't want to smell pig. Come on, there's probably a reason why he did that. He said, man, you, son, you stink. Hey, bring another robe. Put it on him. My Lord, get this pig off of him. Been in the pig pen alive. God wants to clean you up. He wants to have fellowship with you. He wants to bring you up on the porch with him. And if you read the story of the prodigal son over there in Luke 15, you'll see that the father ran to the son. He saw him. He was looking down the road. Listen to me. God's always looking for you to come home. God's not mad at you. He's looking at you to come home. He's wanting you to come home. He's wanting you to turn your heart to him. Hello? Why? Because you're your, your his son. When the prodigal son came home, he was still his son. He had all kinds of wrong thinking in him. He just wanted to come home and just be a servant. God said, you're not a servant, you're a son. A son's a son. Quit taking the servant mentality. Take, quit, quit taking the slave mentality. Don't let yourself be sold out by the devil. Don't let the devil sell you out and say, well, you're a, you know, you're a son of God. Now, your authority lies in heaven, not on this earth. You can't go walk into the bank and say, listen, I'm a son of God. I need to take out a withdrawal. <laughs> they don't cut no mustard down here. Remember, we're, we're just passing through. Listen to me. We're just passing through. I don't know how it all works, but, you know, I hope I get to be in the Bible college when we get to heaven. Because the way I got it figured is, I got it figured is that, you know, we worship God for, you know, the Bible says a thousand years or whatever. I mean, that's pretty, pretty awesome if you're going to stand there for a thousand years and worship God. But uh, I, I just really think there's going to be a lot of people get to heaven. And I don't think when you walk through the gates that you have all knowledge. I, I don't believe it. I, I mean, you can get some scriptures and try to prove me wrong, but... I just don't believe he just walks in. And, I mean, your eyes are going to be open. You're going to see heaven, a lot of revelation, a lot of reality, a lot of the things you heard about and all you're going to see. But I believe there's still got to be Bible college in heaven. And I just want to be a teacher. And just preach every day. And say, look, he's right out there. That's who I'm talking about. Be so easy. Angels, come in here. Get your sword out. Show them. It'll be fun. But you're a son of God and your authority lies in heaven. You're accepted. Verse 6 says, To the praise of the glory of His grace by which He made us accepted in the blood. You're already accepted. You're not trying to gain acceptance. You're not trying to do good works so that God will love you. You do good works because you love God. You're not trying to gain His acceptance. You're not trying to say, oh, listen, if we went to church and then God, uh, I get a gold star, get a, get, a, get a little hickey by my name. I'm already accepted. I'm already in. Hello? Verse 7 says, in him we have the redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of grace. Folks, Nowhere, you read all throughout the Old Testament for for 4,000 years of history, nobody got their sins forgiven because they asked. You had to do something to get your sins forgiven. 
And then Jesus comes on the scene and everything changes. Comes on the scene, everything changes where you can go to him and say, forgive me for I've sinned. And he washes your sins away. Repentance is the greatest thing in the world. You know what keeps you from repentance? Pride. You know what pride is? Not wanting to admit you're wrong. I love the the passage where the Pharisee's standing there before the altar and he says, uh, Lord, you know, I thank you that I've not done this and I've not done that and I've not done this and I've not done that. And then he looks down at this other old sinner over there and he says, uh, and thank you that I'm not as bad as that guy. And the other guy's over there beating on his chest saying, God, forgive me, I'm a sinner. Folks, that's the way we got to be in life. You want the forgiveness of your sins? Forget about pride. Forget about what you look like. Run to the altar of God and say, man, forgive me, Lord, I am an idiot. The moment in your life you say, well, listen to me. If you say, well, you know, that may not have been right, but, you know, at least... At least I'm not like, it's, the minute that thought comes to you, folks, I want to tell you something. you got a devil speaking to you, an old religious demon speaking into your head, and you better run to the altar and throw yourself on it. Jesus, I believe, gave the illustration. He says, if you run over to the rock and you throw yourself on the rock, then you'll be broken. But if you let the rock fall on you, ooh, it's going to smush. That's a paraphrase from Robert, but... I'd rather throw myself on the rock than have the rock fall on me. Amen? Ephesians 1 and 11 says, In Him we have obtained an inheritance. Everybody say, In Him. Do you know you don't have to work for an inheritance? You just have to be born right. 